All right, I'm getting ready to make beef ribs, some beef ribs uh, in the oven. I know, I know what you're thinking. It'd be better if it wasn't in the oven if it were actually grilled or I actually have a smoker if it was smoked. And I have all the ancillaries to go with the smoker, all the stuff I need to really make it right. All kind of different wood, chips, and all kinds of stuff. But with the cold weather outside, um, I haven't had a lot of luck smoking things in, in the, when it's really cold like that, when it's like freezing or so outside. And it's labor intensive. It's a ridiculous amount of uh, how much you have to monitor the thing. And it's a lot. So not complaining, just saying I don't feel like going through all that and spending all that time. So I want to, it's already 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, I was torn between if I wanted to make uh, these scallops I have. I have a bunch of scallops in there. I think I'll do that tomorrow. Or if I wanted to make these ribs. So I'm going to make the ribs. And it's not going to be a bunch of fancy stuff. I'm not some kind of chef uh, like I've told you again and again. Uh, this is just out of necessity. You want to eat. You might have to cook for yourself sometime. Um, so... I'm going to take these ribs, I'm going to use a store-bought dry rub on them. I'm going to cook them face down. Uh, a lot of people don't cook them that way when they do it in the oven, but I'm going to cook them that way. I'm going to cook them low and slow, low heat, slow cook them. Once I've got the dry rub in there, I'll put them back in this pan. I'll cover them up and wrap them tight up in tin foil, meat side down, and I'll cook them in the oven. Meat side down because you got all that fat on the back side or what fat you have there predominantly uh, is on the back side. And I don't want to get some flavor into that meat. And then I'll let them cook for probably two plus hours. And then I'll pull them out. I'll open that up, that tin foil up. I'll uh, flip them around meat side up and baste them with some hickory barbecue sauce that I have here, maybe a little bit of this Frank's Red Hot. We'll see, and, and whatever rub I'm going to use, I think that it's better to mix that in with my barbecue sauce, and then I'm going to brush that on all these ribs, or I'm going to apply it, maybe I don't have a brush, and <laughs> I'm going to apply it um, to the ribs. And then they'll be in there for another hour, and every 10 minutes I'll pull them out and, and baste them with some more of the... Uh, barbecue sauce and put them back in every 10 minutes. All right, I washed my ribs off. I'm going to wash them off some more. I'm going to pull this face off there. I even washed the packaging that they were encapsulated within. I washed all that out. Why? Common sense, I'm going to put it in the trash. The trash goes out in the morning. I don't want it to stink, so I wash all the blood and all that shit off of there. I don't want that in there. This is what I'm pulling off here. This is what I'm talking about. Um, you gotta have a fairly decent grip. I can't switch hands with the camera because I got this shit all over my hands now. But you have a fairly decent grip. You just pull this off, it peels right off. See? Pull that off of there. You don't have to. You don't have to. Or I'm gonna pull it off of there. Because I'm gonna cook them kind of upside down, if you will, initially for the first two hours. So I don't need this on there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this and pull this off of here because, like I said, I'm using this one hand. And I'm going to wash these off again really well. And we'll get back to it. Well, another thing, if you run hot water over this, you'll have a lot easier time pulling this shit off of here. I'm not, I mean like a vastly easier time pulling it off of there. Now, you see there's a good bit of fat here. See this excess fat? If you wanted to trim that off, if I were going to cook these the other way, meat side up, um, it might not be any great benefit to leaving that. But I'm going to leave this excess fat on here as much as it has because I'm cooking them as you see them sitting here. This is how they're going to be cooking initially. And that fat, I want all that, to, those juices to run down through this meat, give it a little bit more flavor. All right, so I'm going to try and put this dry rub. This is a store-bought dry rub. I'm not saying these are going to be some kind of gourmet ribs. I'm just saying uh, I'm going to get these done. I'm going to cook them low and slow, slow and low, but they're going to be relatively quick. You know, it would be a really long, drawn-out process if I were really trying to make them 
you know, make a statement with these ribs, but I'm not. I'm trying to eat. So, I'm going to rub all this in. Get this all and all the cracks and everything in there. Now, actually, what would be ideal for me, I think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, is if I could put these up on something. Flip them over. Some rub on the other side. It's a mess. It's a mess. Have to adapt. Make do with what I have. Put this on here. Generous amounts of this on here. Rub it in. that little piece on the end there. This is a mess. Alright. Try and get in all the cracks and crevices everywhere you can. In the ends of it. I would like to stick a, some kind of a rack under this to get this up off the bottom of this pan. I don't know if I'm able to do that or not. But I have a backup plan. I can cook them another way. There's so many ways you can do this. So many ways. It's all depends on how you want to do it. There's no dead set right and wrong way. It's a matter of taste. Okay, so as it turns out, I do not have a rack that will fit in here. Racks I have are too long so that I can elevate this these ribs off of the bottom of that pan. If I could do that, then I would put some apple juice or even just water or whatever in the bottom of this pan a little bit. And I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is use a more, even more tin foil than this, aluminum foil than this, and wrap these chokers up even tighter than that. Then they're going to go in that oven. Okay, so they're in the oven at 250 degrees. They're going to stay in there for about two hours, two hours, 15 minutes or so. Then I'm going to pull them out and check them. Uh, see how tender they are. They may need to stay in there longer. It depends on your oven. I'm, I'm figuring maybe two and a half hours I'm going to leave them in there and cook. So after two and a half hours, then we're going to pull them out. And if they're good and ready, which I think they'll be, then the last hour they'll come out of the you know they'll go two and a half as they are then they'll come out then they'll get unwrapped i'll open up the tin foil and then i'll i'll flip them over and slather them down with this uh barbecue this hickory barbecue sauce i have and i'll mix some more dry rub in with the sauce and then they'll go back in there at um 350 and then they'll stay in there 10 minutes come out repeat Back in 10 minutes, come out, repeat, until it's been about 50 minutes to an hour. Then they should be good and ready to go. So, you know, and I know if there's anybody out there that cooks, you're probably a better cook than I am. So uh, this is how I'm going to do it, and we'll see how they turn out. The proof is in the pudding. All right, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that I was filming this shit. So pulled them out of there at about, I don't know, 10 after 5 p.m. Pulled them out. No, wait a minute, I'm sorry. About 5.40, pulled them out of there. Right, it was 10 minutes over, so it would have been 5.30, 5.40. Pulled them out of there, uncovered them. They're already very tender. They already actually taste pretty good. Tell you the truth, I know. Um, so I drained water and shit out of the bottom of the pan, cleaned all that up, removed the cover off of them, flipped them over the right way up and uh, basted them really good with uh, with some barbecue sauce, a little bit of hot sauce, um, some more of the dry rub, mix that all together in there, and just some uh, cracked black pepper. And they're back in the oven now, temperature turned up to 350, they're gonna go in there for about 10 or 12 minutes and come out and get basted and go back again. And here's what they're looking like so far. I don't know if you're gonna see in there or not, all the heat will fog up the lens. They're in there. Let me zoom in. 
There they are. They're in there. All right, so, of course, I'm going to have my staple, which is broccoli. Now, I could have baked beans, a uh, good bit of sodium in them, or I make some homemade mac and cheese, macaroni and cheese, with these elbow macaronis. And as you can see, the little nutrition label, you see a lot of zeros on there. A lot of zeros. All right, total fat, zero. All the fats are zero, cholesterol, zero, sodium, zero. Total carbohydrate, 41 grams. Five or two grams, sugar, zero, protein, seven grams. So it's not so much this, other than that it's basically got a lot of wheat in it. But other than that, which I try and steer clear of a lot of wheat, but... Uh, other than that, that's not in and of itself so bad for you. It's what you're going to put on it that's going to you know, drive those numbers, the other numbers that are all zeros right now. Anyway, that's what I'm going to make, and I'll show you that. Right now i got some water on trying to get boiling and get started with it, and then we'll, I'll show you that too. Okay, so now they pull out. They've been in there about 10 or 12 minutes. Pull them out. Getting ready to give them another basting. I'll baste them some more. So I just basted them again, freshly basted. Now secret ingredient time, a little of this. Why this? I want to caramelize a little bit now. But I'm only going to put very little. you would be very uh, conservative about how much that you put on there. And then they're going right back in. All right, so now the macaroni, Elba macaroni, has been boiling for about... Yeah, it's been on there for six to eight minutes, I guess. I just pulled a couple out and tasted them. I think they're good. They're great right consistency. I put a little tiny dash of uh, Himalayan salt in there and a little teeny tiny bit of uh, oil, avocado oil, to help keep it from sticking and shit. So you know, take it off of the heat. Take it over here and drain it, see? And put it down in here. Strain the water out of it. All right, so this is my macaroni. I put uh, sh shredded cheese, two different kinds in there. I put some shredded uh, ch sharp cheddar, stirred it up real good. And then I put some a little bit of mozzarella in there. They're not really going to be at odds. It's mostly sharp cheddar. It's just going to give it a little, just a, a, another aspect to the flavor. It's pretty good. It's going to be good. All right, so I just put some more barbecue sauce on there. I put a little bit of hot sauce on there and uh, ground some black pepper on there. I didn't put any more syrup on there because you want to be really moderate with the syrup use. Now it's back in the oven again. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put my broccoli florets that I just steamed. I'm going to put those bad boys right in here and stir them all up with this, you know. Hey, if you don't like the broccoli florets, you don't have to eat them. There's going to be pl there's plenty of macaroni and cheese here, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, so there it is. There it is. It's all done. I'm going to sit down and chow down and eat into it, and I'll let you know what it's like. All right, now, this is actually pretty damn good. I'm going to say, if I bought this out somewhere, I'm not going to say now if I were in like some highfalutin, really expensive restaurant, but I might expect a little bit more flavor. I don't think I'd really complain a whole lot, though. It's not, it's, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. It's pretty damn good. I'll tell you what, I've had beef ribs um, from various places where they put a lot more effort into it than I just did, and they were only this good. I wouldn't say that they were better. I have had better, but these are pretty damn good. So, you know, it's good for me. It tastes good. I'm good with it. And that's what it's about. And, um, you know, yeah, it would be awesome to smoke them. And when the weather gets a little bit better, I'll absolutely smoke some smoke some stuff out on the grill, some brisket, some ribs and things on the, on the smoker. And, uh, well, and then that'll be 
you know, five star. That'll be done right. But it'll take a lot longer, be a lot more labor intensive. Anyway, that's it. I am out of here for shortest time. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good evening.